Garden stands for Sanctuary for Health and Reconnection to Animals and Nature. And this name came from my observing animals in nature and seeing that they were healthy. If they could be healthy and knew how to restore their health when sick, why can't we? We can. And today's topic is digestive disorders. And today we're mainly going to look at lower digestive disorders because acidity and gastric ulcers and duodenal ulcers and GERD, hiatus hernia, these have already been done before in another session. And you can even view that on our YouTube channel. So before I go on, I just want to invite one of our guests Actually, he's a facilitator. Uh, his name is Manish Sangai. Manish has reversed his own um, autoimmune disease. And he's going to talk about how he got better with digestive disorders today as well. And I really thank, thank Manish for being here because today was a very busy day for him. And he took time out to be here. Manish, over to you. To tell all you. my all my pleasure for uh, inviting me to the session today. I wanted to be a part of this session because um, I want everyone to like take inspiration from my story. So I'm Manish Sanghai. I stay in Mumbai. I'm 40 years old. And this story goes back to 1995 when I was just 11 years. So I contacted tuberculosis in stomach and the lower abdomen. Uh, and uh, doctor told us that it will take maybe nine months to heal. At that time, they, were, they used to give medicines for nine months. But 18 months happened. I took two complete doses but nothing happened. And then the inflammation in the stomach was there. Uh, I had loose motions. I lost quite a bit of weight. I was not able to like eat anything. Anything that I ate either came out through the mouth or through loose motions. This went on uh, later on. Doctor told me that I have a disease called Addison's disease, wherein it was adrenal insufficiency. And I took corti, uh, prednisolone, uh, the steroids for eight years. I took uh, steroid for eight years. Because of the inflammation, I got a disease, auto autoimmune condition known as ankylosing spondylitis. I got autoimmune hemolytic anemia where my hemoglobin used to fall suddenly. And because of all the medications that I took in 2008, I got a zero sperm count. So being married in 2004 and having a zero sperm count at the age of 24, along with so many autoimmune conditions, I was barely able to walk. Doctor told me that because of spondylosis, I may require hip replacement surgery. And Crohn's is just, I got something called as Crohn's disease, which later on we will learn that what is Crohn's and what are the modalities and how you can like treat yourself. Doctors say that it is not curable, but you will learn from my story that how you can manage your condition better. So Crohn's, I was diagnosed in 2008 and that came out to be the root cause of all my illnesses. So as they say that your stomach is the headquarter of all your diseases. So when the root cause was like diagnosed, I was like, I uh, tried to like treat myself only with medications initially. So on one hand, I used to take medications. On other hand, I used to eat all junk food, all pizzas and pastas of the world. I didn't like ghar ka khana and everything wrong I used to eat. So I was somewhere thinking that there is some magic pill in this world that can treat my disease, that I can eat what I want. I was not exercising regularly. All the negative thought patterns were there because of so many illnesses at this young age. And somewhere I started blaming God why, that why me at this such a young age. But I never stopped trying. I like uh, went from one doctor to another, one healer to another. And I was very blessed to uh, reach a place called the Yoga Institute in Mumbai. So there they taught me that the root cause of the illness is yes, there is inflammation in the stomach. So if the problem is in the stomach, then obviously, first of all, I need to change my diet. So what they did is they explained me about the inflammatory nature of my disease and they stopped everything that increased inflammation. So I went off sugar completely, off refined sugar completely. I stopped outside food, the outside food that I used to have. At that time, I, had, I didn't have knowledge about the whole food plant-based diet, which I later learned with Sharon. But yes, my eat, my diet was transformed completely. Like it was a complete 180 degree transformation. Along with that, I started exercising. They worked a lot on my mind. So the stress factor that was there, that aggravated my condition, that was being taken care of by better understanding of my anatomy, uh, by better understanding of how thoughts impact my healing. I understood the fact that our bodies are a self-healing mechanism. Like if I get a cut in my hand, if this can heal on my on its own, 
why can't my crons get healed on its own so my duty i learned was just to provide the right environment to heal so when i stopped putting all the junk into my body at the same time yes i took medications anti inflammatories initially but gradually it was tapered down by the doctor and i suffered for 14 years but by just changing my diet my lifestyle exercises i started waking up on time started doing meditation so many things and within 6 to 8 months gradually all the medicines were tapered off by doctor so once doctor told me that manish by the age of 30 you may need a hip replacement and the age of 32 i ran a half marathon doctors told that i cannot father a child my first child was through a donor sperm through ivf a uh, second child was uh, adopted and just after we adopted a second child i went on a raw diet i just changed my diet what i am following right now with sharan and uh, my sperm count revived and uh, i have my third biological child so magic happened with me like in so many ways that somewhere somehow this lie was told to me by doctors i'm not blaming them because they are not taught this way to heal the diseases but i believe that we as human beings have the innate capacity to heal ourselves provided we provided the right environment to heal so the diet that i learned at the yoga institute at several other centers i somehow didn't enjoy it because i still loved my junk food i still had that craving for it and that yo yo thing was there in my diet and i was not like consistent with it frankly um, i was slightly overweight i became slightly overweight in 2020 and i happened to like uh, come across sharan and i went to their retreat in 2022 yes uh, august 2022 i went to their 7 day healing retreat with captain joseph pinto and therein i caught a liver infection i thought yaar itna acha khana khaya i had such good food how can i get liver infection and better when i returned home <laughs> i was diagnosed with a fatty liver i was not very overweight so i used to think that i am eating very healthy i am eating all the good foods but still i have a fatty liver then i tried shifting to a completely whole food plant based diet which is much about vegan so i stopped oil completely i stopped milk completely no paneer no ghee i started eating foods that were meant for us to be eaten as human beings all the natural foods mainly from plant all, all from plant sources in the most natural form and after that i haven't looked back so i used to take certain uh, omega 3 supplements earlier to control my inflammation that also stopped completely so i ha- haven't taken even a single supplement in the last 18 months or so with sharan and this uh, like is a revelation for me that uh, you actually don't need anything made in a factory or in a pharmacy or a, uh, or from a company to heal you that if you completely shift to a whole food plant based diet if you start exercising make yourself a priority what we learned that in the initial videos that we saw before the session that, that i made myself a priority that everything is secondary my health is first i'm not being selfish by uh, keeping myself first because how can i take care of others if i don't take care of myself so my request to all of you today before we begin the session be very attentive it's a beautiful presentation made by dr shah when you will learn the, at the in deep about all the diseases which may impact you agar aapko hai to you can cure yourself if you don't have you can learn so that you can prevent those diseases because prevention is always better than cure So I can say that I'm in the best shape of my life, thanks to Sharan, thanks to Captain Joseph Pinto, Rena, Doctor Shah, for like teaching us this philosophy in such a beautiful way. So early I used to didn't enjoy my diet, and now I'm loving my diet. It's like no craving at all. So I'm going to a, my niece's uh, engagement right now. I'm carrying my dinner. I have my dinner in the car. Nothing from outside because I don't crave that at all now. So thank you very much for to Sharan for showing me the way to like. completely off all supplements all medications and i hope every one of you here will take inspiration from my story inspiration from the presentation and take charge of your life yeah. thank you manish for that and you know manish had several autoimmune diseases crohn's is an autoimmune disease on top of it he had ankylosing spondylitis and uh, the hemolytic anemia and all of that and no more medicines and all of that is gone now just by healthy diet and now manish really understands that health tastes much better than any food in the world but actually our food tastes good and you can learn how to make all these things really delicious through our, our cooking classes and other things but first we have to learn what to do so thank you manish for joining us 
and I know you have to go, but we will go on with the presentation and say a bit more. Thank you, Manish. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen again and we'll go back to the presentation. So there are a variety of digestive disorders. The common ones are constipation. So many people have this and diarrhea and gas and bloating and IBS, irritable bowel syndrome and ulcerative colitis and Crohn's. This is what Manish talked about and celiac disease. And these are the things that we are going to cover today as well as colon cancer, which we won't cover because we've done a whole session on, um, on cancers, but I'll cover it in short. And ulcers and acidity and GERD and hiatus hernia, which I told you that we've done in another whole session on acidity, and you can refer to that anytime on our YouTube channel. Now, what is the main cause of digestive disorders? And anyone can say this, but obviously it's the foods that we're putting into our body, the foods that are unnatural for us, the foods that God didn't or nature didn't expect us to eat and toxic substances that we may be consuming. And this is not at all uncommon in today's world. I know lots of people are using Swiggy and Zomato on a regular basis. And to tell you the truth, I don't even know how to order from those. So, and that's not because I never have to eat out, but I never want to eat things that I don't know what is exactly in that food, you know, because I, I consider, as Manish said, my body to be something sacred. I don't want to just have like five minutes or 10 minutes of pleasure and suffer after that for a long time. Imagine so many years of suffering that Manish went through. And when he realized and changed his diet, he could change so many things. So before I go on, I'm going to ask Rosemary Rosemary is going to share her story with us. And Rosemary, would you like to um, speak? Yeah. Hello. Toilets. Toilets. Availability of toilets. Location of toilets. Access to toilets. All these were things which really were a major cause of concern for me whenever I stepped out of home some time ago. For many years, whenever I stepped out, you know, toilets were quite top of the mind for me. Hello, I'm Rosemary. And while this is a very embarrassing topic, there are many of us who suffer from gastrointestinal disturbances. And I would like to share with you how I achieved freedom from this. So when I was a baby, it was really hard to make me drink milk. I have heard tales, stories of how my grandmother used to seat me in a tub of water and she would put, you know, baby coconuts in the water, which I could play with. And when I was thus distracted, she would feed me milk. And I did not like it much, but this was her way of feeding me milk. She thought that she was being a good grandmother doing to, this to me. And as a child, I remember very distinctly feeling very bloated and uncomfortable after drinking milk. This milk used to be flavored with a little coffee to make it bearable so that I could have it. Uh, but as the coffee increased and the milk decreased, uh, my discomfort also decreased. But on and off, I used to have some GI disturbances and this went on. Now it was when I went to university and I was living in a hostel 
with no access to really good quality food, the quality of food was poor. I, I started to experience a lot of gastrointestinal uh, issues, diarrhea, constipation, etc. And this went on, on and off, um, even after that. But it was really when I went to move to London in my 30s that this became quite bad. I, I was a busy mom of two in London, we had easy access to uh, processed meats. We had easy access to uh, frozen meals. And as a busy mother, I was quite happy to take advantage of this and to supplement my home cooking with some of this. And I fed it to the children too. So it was something where I could experience sudden diarrhea followed by constipation. I also developed intolerances to food. Um, apple, which is supposed to be so good, I couldn't have more than a little bit of it without suffering discomfort and embarrassment. Then we returned to India about nine years later, and this became worse, not better, even though we were having home-cooked meals and home-cooked food most of the time, it just became worse. Of course, we had either meat or fish or eggs uh, regularly, almost on a daily basis uh, during meals. So I used to carry loperamide capsules around because I was worried about an upset tummy. And sometimes it used to be such that I even used to take it in as a preventive measure when traveling somewhere or going somewhere important or going somewhere where I thought that I wouldn't have access to toilet. When going out for a meal, I used to hurry home after the meal. And my friends used to ask me, what is this? What? Why do you hurry home after a thing? Why can't you stay a while and spend some time with us? And they thought that it was very odd. And I was being really rude hurrying off. But I was scared that, you know, there could be an episode. Then I, I, at that time, I used to have dairy yogurt daily because I was convinced in my mind that dairy yogurt helped me um, prevent some episodes of all this diarrhea and constipation. And it would help my... Uh, gut because of the probiotics in the dairy yogurt. So whether justified or not, whether factual or not, I used to have dairy yogurt on a regular basis. Then I was introduced to the whole food plant-based diet and I took it up for weight loss because I, I was quite overweight at that time and I was struggling with weight issues and I was struggling to lose weight so I took it up to uh, for weight loss and I lost some weight, but also my gut started settling down a bit. However, I must say that I was too scared to give up yogurt because I thought that it was helping me. That was what was keeping me even and, uh, and keeping my gut happy. So I was just too scared to give that up, but I wanted to. So about a year and a half after that, I had the opportunity to attend a 21-day health retreat held by Sharon at Gokarna. Among other goals that I had for the health retreat and among the other reasons why I wanted to attend the health retreat was that I wanted to wean myself off dairy yogurt. So I thought, what better place, what better opportunity I would have toilet near, nearby because we would be staying at a resort and Dr. Nandita would be at hand in case I needed any help. And I was so scared that I booked a single occupancy room. I did not want double occupancy so that I could run to the toilet if I needed to. However, I, I, I did not experience any adverse you know, tummy issues at the, you know, at the retreat. 
we had some peanut yogurt once in a way in some of the dishes at the retreat. But by and large, we did not have uh, any yogurt at all. We just had the whole food, um, you know, plant-based whole food, which was being cooked over there. And we had a lot of salads and smoothies. And these were things which I was a little worried about whether I would again have tummy issues. But I, I had no issue. And Dr. Nandita taught us in one of the classes over there how we do not really need probiotics. You know, how the fiber that we have through the plant food that we are eating, through the whole plant food that we are eating, helps to feed the gut microbes and keeps our gut healthy and happy. So after returning from the retreat, my gut happened, continued to be happy, continued to be well. And I have a very, very happy and healthy gut now and a very happy life. And I'm so passionate about this whole food plant-based diet. So passionate that I am I also act as an ambassador for the diet. And I help people who want to transition to this. I help in coaching them. Thank you very much for a patient hearing. Thank you, Rosemary, for sharing all that. And I know that I'm sure it has inspired so many because you, both you and Manish had such severe issues. And both of you have got almost, you know, like you're completely cured and Manish is also almost completely cured. And I just think that's so amazing. And we're going to discuss how anyone here and everyone else can get cured. But remember one thing, both of them started seeing the result when they stopped all animal products, including milk. And I know that Rosemary... She did our facilitator training program after that. She's been helping so many people. And this is on the top of her mind. And Rosemary, I'm so grateful to have you here. Thank you for that. I just want to talk about how we are going to solve these problems. Usually, whenever we have a problem, we go to the doctor. And doctor gives us medicines. And medicines work at the level of symptoms. Medicines can only remove symptoms and that too temporarily. But if we want to get rid of a problem, we have to go to the level of cause. That means we have to think, what is the real cause of this problem and remove it so that we don't have any more symptoms because the body's duty is to produce symptoms to tell us that something is wrong so that we can change and heal. So we have to thank symptoms Say thank you to our body for producing symptoms and start looking at what is the cause of those symptoms and start removing them. And that's what we're going to do for every single disease, whether it's digestive problems or diabetes or anything else, look at the cause and remove it. So if we think of constipation, what are the causes of constipation? Number one, lack of fiber. Fiber only comes from plants. There's no fiber in animal products. So the minute you consume only plants, your fiber intake goes straight up. And the minute you can consume only whole plants, no refined plants, no peeled vegetables, minimizing the peeling of fruits to those that you can peel with your bare hands, then we have a whole plant-based diet, which it's really rare for someone to suffer from constipation if they're consuming whole foods. Then bad toilet habits, like holding on. Like suppose you need to go in the morning at 8 o'clock, but you have to hold on till 8.30 or something. Then your body kind of hardens the stool and it's not so easy to pass stool anymore. And you may suffer from constipation. Another thing is antacids. When we take antacids that contain calcium or aluminum, this can cause constipation and so can certain medications, which is why our whole goal is to get free of as many medications as we can 
so that our body can keep on healing like Manish talked about. And honestly, both Rosemary and Manish had multiple problems and they're free from all of them. And then the use of aluminum utensils. You know, aluminum has been banned by the government of India, especially for um, like restaurants and public places of eating, but it's used everywhere because it's cheap and it's a very good conductor and things don't get stuck easily in aluminum vessels. But it's really important to change that. And if you have any aluminum vessels or even an aluminum pressure cooker, please think about making a change. Aluminum causes more diseases than just constipation. It can even cause Parkinson's and other things. And then not drinking enough water, that's easy to fix. But sometimes we don't drink enough water because of fixed ideas in our mind that don't drink while eating. Don't drink right after eating. After that, I forgot to drink. Then we have all these problems. So please think about listening to your body. Drink whenever you're thirsty. Your body knows when it needs water and books and other advisors may be right, but they may be wrong. Your body will never be wrong for you. Lack of exercise causes lack of movements, even of the bowels. And this is also important. And of course, if you have a tumor or growth, if you have cancer of the colon, you might suffer from constipation just because it's an obstruction in the passage of the stool. The second common problem is bloating. And what are the causes of bloating? And number one cause is dairy, even a little. That means even if you cut out every bit of dairy in your life, but once in a while you have a cup of tea or a biscuit and you know biscuits have five bad ingredients, sugar, a bit of salt, maida or white flour, fat and milk powder. And then a few others as well. But um, so when we consume that little bit of chai and biscuits, wake up in the morning and it's the first thing on our menu, then we can have problems. But the good news is it's not difficult with Sharon's lifestyle to get over tea and coffee. It doesn't take more than three or four days maximum if you have plenty of green smoothies and it can you can overcome these kind of problems for life. Mixing fruit with other foods, like having a whole thali you know, I live in South India and meals are often a whole thali of vegetables and dals and rice and so on. But then there's a fruit, a banana right after it. Don't do that because the fruits digest quickly, but other foods take long to digest. So while the food is digesting, the fruit sits on top and ferments and causes gas. Mixing melons with other fruits. Melons and most other fruits have a different way of digestion. So you can have melons together. Musk melon, cantaloupe, watermelon can all be had together, but ideally separate them from the other fruits. Now, you may not do that. And if you don't suffer from gas by mixing fruits, you don't have to separate them. But look carefully. You just might, it just might be a cause of gas. Then too much variety in one meal. Have you noticed that when we go for go to a wedding and have all those things on the menu, then the next day we don't feel so good? This is because there are too many different digestive processes that the body has to do in order to digest all of that. And while something is digesting, another thing is fermenting and we get gas. Gluten. If there's gluten intolerance. And you know, if we were to eat foods that are natural to our species, they are foods that we're instinctively drawn to. 
Like if you go to a farm, you instinctively feel like picking fruits and vegetables. But if you see green fields of wheat and rice, our mouth doesn't water because it's not our food. So we must remember that we should increase the intake of fruits and vegetables and decrease the intake of grains in general. And we should decrease the intake of gluten if there's gluten intolerance. And we could even consider not having wheat anymore. Especially if you have an autoimmune disease. And then certain ma medications, like we have a gut microbiome. And we'll talk more about that later, but there's bacteria in the gut microbiome, which is good bacteria and which is useful but if we take an antibiotic, even to handle another infection, like a throat infection or anything else, that antibiotic is going to kill the bacteria in the gut as well. And this could cause problems. And chemotherapy is like taking 10 antibiotics together. Obviously, it will cause problems. And then probiotics. As you saw, Rosemary was having yogurt or curds as a probiotic. But what do probiotics do? And today, you know, you can actually buy probiotics. And lots of people consume probiotics. And so if you were to take um, probiotics and consume them, this upsets the population of different good bacteria in the gut. Because most probiotics are only one or two different bac good bacteria. So when should we take a probiotic? When we've killed everything after an antibiotic. But even then, we should just take one or two. Because if you think about yogurt, Rosemary was telling you that she learned why yogurt is not necessary. Because if you think about yogurt, one spoon of curd put into warm milk makes a whole bowl of curd, right? That means when you have one a spoon of good bacteria, you have as much as you need. And it's the same in our gut. So if we have certain populations of bacteria in our gut, they will multiply just as needed. And we don't have to worry about anything. We definitely don't need to take artificially made probiotics, the things you can buy in the market. Then food cooked much in advance. When you cook the food in the morning and leave it out and then eat it in the afternoon or evening, it's decomposing. And so it's fermenting and it can cause gas. Then lack of fiber. Fiber is what the good bacteria grow on. And therefore, fiber is very important and lack of fiber can cause bloating as well. Like eating all these refined foods, if you go out to McDonald's and have maida and all kinds of things, you might have bloating the next day. Not chewing your food properly. You know, the our digestion begins in our mouth. And truly, you may have heard people say that you should chew your food till you can drink it. And that's true. If we chew our food well, we won't even need a blender, but we don't. So let's chew our food really well and then slow down, eat slowly, chew well, and no more bloating. And then this is another thing that happens. Nibbling all day long, too many small meals. Pass the kitchen, pick up something. Pass the dining room, pick up something. So it would be best to limit our meals to only five a day at the maximum. Breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner. If you're eating in between these five meals, it means your digestive system never has a rest. Personally, I eat only three meals most of the time. That means breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And there are people who do even better than that two meals or just one meal a day. But look, don't listen to anyone else. Listen to your body. If you can do with three meals a day, don't go for four, right? But if you need five meals a day, that's fine too. No more than five meals a day. 
constipation. Obviously, if you have decayed substance in your gut, it can lead to a toxic buildup and cause bloating as well. That's why it's important to heal constipation. And antibiotics and probiotics in the, taken in the past could kill all the gut microbiome so that you have bloating for a long time till the new gut microbiome with the right proportions of different families of bacteria forms so that it's actually beneficial to you. And pesticides, when we eat non-organic foods, remember pesticides can kill, bacteria, uh, can kill uh, insects, they can also kill bacteria or genetically modified foods make their own pesticides and we should highly avoid them. And not soaking beans or lentils can cause problems too because, you know, these seeds have something on top of them that protects the plant from, from the predators, from the uh, animals or, that will eat the plant. So uh, we shouldn't eat too much of anything. And if we soak beans, that comes off and then it's much more digestible. So soak them well throughout the water and then uh, cook them in new water, in fresh water. Now, diarrhea is another issue. So we are now going to discuss the causes of diarrheas. Number one cause is infections or food poisoning. Infections like a giardia or amoebiasis or bacterial dysentery or food poisoning like salmonella or E. coli, etc. And you know what? Truly, bacteria should not be a big problem because our body knows how to deal with it. Also, amoeba and parasites should not, worms, etc. should not be a big problem most of the time because your body can have immunity against most of these things. But if our immune system is low, if we've been taking steroids, if we've been taking medicines or chemotherapy, then we're likely to get infections. Or if we just haven't had a good gut microbiome, we can get infections. So the main thing if we have these things is don't take medicines because what do medicines do like low motil? It stops the movement of the gut. Now, the gut when it has infection, it tries to move. It tries to create diarrhea to throw everything out as soon as possible. And ideally, all you should do is drink water or a rehydration fluid, which you can make at home, just by taking water, a bit of lime juice, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of jaggery, uh, so that it gives you some... Um, electrolytes as well as some calories so that you don't fall down and keep drinking that or anything else that your body tells you that would be good for you and uh, so that you can give yourself a few calories when you're losing many and nothing will happen your body will clean out and you won't need any medication Sometimes there can be an emergency and you might need medications, but most of the time you won't need them. And then stress and anxiety can also cause diarrhea. And that's why it's so important to deal with stress and anxiety. And we've done a talk on that as well, so I won't go into that in detail. But we should be aware of the cause and work on that. And then excess fiber. I remember once when I had a, a smoothie, green smoothie with moringa. And I put in too much moringa and moringa is full of fiber. And I got diarrhea, right? So don't have too much excess fiber. And always be careful with moringa. Have some, but not too much. And the same goes with moringa powder. And then food intolerances. Like Rosemary was talking about food intolerances, she was actually allergic to so many things that she can eat now. And she's actually talked about this in another talk on allergies. 
And then medications like antibiotics and chemo and radiation, where your whole gut doesn't work the way it should anymore. And you have diarrhea just because you're unable to digest things properly. And then IBS or irritable bowel syndrome. And, uh, you know, that's something that uh, Rosemary had and that Shalini soon is going to talk about. Inflammatory bowel diseases like Crohn's and ulcerative colitis can also lead to diarrhea and so can celiac disease. So we need to, un and we'll be talking about each one of these. So we need to understand the causes of these and remove them. So Shalini, would you like to share your story now? Thank you so much, doctor. I'm so indebted and grateful to you for changing my life. Hello, everyone. I'm Shalini, and I'm working as a facilitator and a diabetic educator with Dr. Nandita Shah since last five years. 2017, I joined Sharon. So today, I'm going to tell you about my story, which, is, which was 10 years back. I hail from a Rajasthani Marwari family, and my diet and food was very high on dairy. I would consume two to three glasses of milk a day. I would have paneer cheese, butter, ghee, and whatnot in the form of dairy. Never knowing that it was destroying my gut microbiome. I started developing asthma. And just because of asthma, I had to inject steroids. I had nebulizer. I would end up with cough and cold every second, third month. And I would end up taking a lot of antibiotics and anti-allergics. It went on for almost 15 to 20 years of my life. As a result of that, my gut microbiome totally got destroyed and I started developing IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. And as Rosemary said, toilets, toilets, toilets everywhere. Same is similar my story. I would hesitate to go out of my house for anything. There were days where I, would, I was not able to function. In fact, and never wanted to function or get out of my house or meet anyone. Because after every meal, again, I would look for washroom somewhere nearby. I would be so afraid that I stopped meeting parents. I stopped going in any of my family functions. I would be just at home. And as a result, I developed anxiety and depression too, to some extent. Then in 2010, one of the doctors in my neighborhood told me that, Shalini, why don't you stop dairy and see results for yourself? When I did that, gradually in six months, 60 to 70% of my issues got control. My asthma medication stopped and my irritable bowel syndrome, like my bowel movements, which was during three to four to five times sometimes during the day, it came down to just a couple of that. And I realized that maybe... It was a lot of dairy. I was eating a large amount of food and a variety of food in one meal. I got my blood test done. Other investigations were done and I found I had allergies to quite a few of food uh, uh, ingredients. And gluten was one of them. I was gluten sensitive. I had gluten insensitivity too. And when I stopped gluten, 80 to 90 percent of my problems, you know, came into control. But there was still the 10 to 20 percent I was looking for. I really wanted something, you know, to get absolutely rid of all my medications and have a disease-free life. While I was looking that, I came across Yoga Institute. I started doing um, yoga and meditation, but still I was struggling with my issues with the 10 to 20, 10 to 20 percent. And I realized that when you really want to heal yourself, something you really want from your heart, universe conspires to get it to you. And in 2017, I ended up ending Dr. Narita's one-day seminar on reversing diabetes and hypertension. And after that, it was no looking back. After that seminar, I joined Dr. Narita as a facilitator, got trained under her as a consultant, and I started consulting my patients. And I realized that it was whole food plant-based diet that made complete change in my lifestyle. I came to know about 
combinations of the food, how I should be eating my fruits and vegetables in what way, how much amount of fiber I'm supposed to have during the day, which I was not consuming, no salads at all, the first half of my life. Finally, when things came into control, I got a new lease of life. There were no bloating, no gas, no diarrhea, no anxiety. I got back in my social circle. I got back doing the things I always wanted to. My lower back pain, which I had for quite some time, just disappeared. I started running marathons. I started taking cold food plan with cooking classes and I started enjoying my life. This was something I was always looking for and what I never used to eat while I was not on a whole food plan based diet. I started eating more variety now. I experiment with Mexican, Thai, Chinese, all kinds of plant based milk, all kinds of plant based butter. And there is no end to the variety of food I can eat now, which I was not eating before. So whole food plant-based diet is something has completely, completely changed my life. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shalini. That was inspiring. And, you know, I know all these stories are so inspiring. And you even lost weight, didn't you? Yes, I lost 15 kgs of weight in almost one and a half years. Yeah. Wow. And you look so good now. So, yes, uh, thank you for all you do. And, you know, I just want to tell everybody that once, you, as you saw, Manish and Rosemary and Shalini, they all got better. And, you know, they realized that this is something that I have to spread. And that's why they all became facilitators and are sharing this information. And so grateful to you for all that you do to spread spread this thank so you. thank you thank you very much okay uh, so now back to my screen share and I know that there have been questions and I am going to answer all these questions soon but we are going to cover everything else first so a little bit about irritable bowel syndrome that Shalini suffered from and so did Rosemary to some extent and what are the symptoms? Abdominal pain, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, diarrhea alternating with constipation, nausea and vomiting and gas and fatigue and weakness. And of course, depression, anxiety, Shalini spoke about that. And what are the causes of irritable bowel syndrome? The kind of food Rosemary talked about how when she ate more processed food, she got even worse. And of course, dairy, Shalini cut out all the dairy and got well. And so it's really important to understand that meat and milk are not our foods. Like a true carnivore or a true omnivore can pounce on its prey, tear it apart and eat it raw, but we can't. It's not our food. Milk is the food that every mammal makes only for their young. And no animal drinks another animal's milk. Pigs don't drink goat's milk. Monkeys don't drink elephant's milk. But we do drink other animals' milk. And I was shocked to see that there are companies producing even other kinds of milk. Camel milk and goat milk and so on and so forth. Llama milk. I can't even believe that people are getting sicker by having more varieties of milk. But you know, as Shalini said, you can have such a huge variety of plant-based milk and plant-based milk is only a plant which is blended with water. You can make it at home. It can be healthy. You know exactly what goes into it. Why not? We have another whole sec uh, talk on the dangers of dairy as well. So do have a view of that if you don't know more about that. And then wrong foods, the Western diet, the refined foods, the chemicals, like what is Coke? It's a bunch of chemicals and sugar, right? How can we possibly put that in our body? And then stress and 
of course, genetics. Genetics play a role. Of course, they do. But genetics are just the gun. But our lifestyle is the trigger and we can change our lifestyle so we never need to fire. Now, what are the solutions for irritable bowel syndrome? If it's really bad, you may have to cut out many foods. Like you heard about both Shalini and Rosemary were, uh, couldn't eat a variety of different foods. So you may have to keep these away. And I've treated some really serious cases of irritable bowel syndrome where I've told them to stop eating everything except for maybe three items that they knew that they wouldn't have any trouble with. For example, I'm remembering a case who, you know, we started with just bananas, potatoes, and dosa, that to white dosa, because that was all she could eat without getting diarrhea. And so we stabilized with those things. And I told her, just eat any of these three things that you feel like eating, that your body asks for. And then after that, like a you know baby that you're introducing foods to, we started introducing foods one at a time, new foods, maybe steamed carrots and so on. It took a long time to get back to the raw foods. But one at a time, we got back to better and better foods. Now, there are some autoimmune diseases, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis and even celiac disease. So here we see three images, one where the gut is totally normal. That's the one uh, most on your left. And then others where the gut is get, uh, you know, Crohn's disease in the center and ulcerative colitis on the right hand side. Crohn's disease affects the entire gut. And Manish had that. And ulcerative colitis only affects the large intestine. And actually, celiac disease largely affects the small intestine. So these three are similar. They're autoimmune diseases, but they affect different parts of the gut. And the characteristics are similar to autoimmune diseases that these are serious. We really have to work on them. And as you may have heard in other sessions on autoimmune diseases, we have to remove all the foreign protein. Of course, meat and dairy are foreign proteins, but so many autoimmune diseases have turned up after vaccination or viral infections. And therefore, the pandemic has played a huge part in this. And then they are cyclical. So you can feel good and then suddenly it becomes worse and you don't know when it'll become worse. And often the result of it is anemia because you're losing blood through ulcers or through inflammation and it can also cause a leaky gut. Let me show you what a leaky gut is. Here you see a normal gut with different cells that are tightly packed against each other so that any food inside the gut cannot flow into the bloodstream. But here you see a leaky or inflamed gut where there are spaces between the cells. You know, this is inflamed, injured, and food particles can actually enter into the bloodstream. And so these foreign proteins, proteins that we, you know, our body produces antibodies against them, they enter our bloodstream and they go elsewhere. And if they look like anything similar to our own body cells, those antibodies which are destroying these foreign proteins will also destroy our own body cells. And so autoimmune disease means auto. Auto means cell, immune. That means you have become immune to yourself, your own cells. You're destroying your own cells. And this is very serious. So what are the causes of Crohn's disease? Of course, they are the things that I told you, foreign proteins, the proteins that we were never supposed to consume, animal proteins and dairy proteins, and then foreign proteins through 
vaccinations and viruses. And of course, it can also happen through blood transfusions and organ transplants because these two are foreign proteins. In fact, someone who has an organ transplant needs to take an immunosuppressive drug their entire life. Otherwise, their body will reject that transplant. So the causes of Crohn's disease can be, on top of these, smoking, and then certain medicines like antibiotics, birth control pills. And, you know, you heard Manish talk about how when he was taking medications, things got worse. Actually, the medications caused an autoimmune disease. And then non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as aspirin and ibuprofen such as Dolo 650, think twice before you take medicines just for minor complaints because it's, it doesn't, medicines never cure. But the body always works to heal. And medicines only remove symptoms. But the symptoms are our guide to cure. Please don't remove symptoms. Understand the cause of symptoms and remove that. And then a high fat diet. And of course, we recommend a whole food plant based diet. And whole food means no oil. And plant based means no ghee or butter. And stress. And of course, stress is one of the major causes of all diseases. So we really have to work on emotional as well as physical, which is why Sharon has so many. Um, so many sessions on emotional well-being and we also have counseling. So the symptoms of Crohn's can be diarrhea, fever, fatigue, abdominal pain and cramping, blood in the stools, mouth sores, reduced appetite and weight loss. And, you know, Manish had all these symptoms and Doctors say Crohn's cannot be cured, but he is well now and doesn't suffer from any of these. And you can even have pain or, you know, pain or drainage. That means some oozing around the anus. Now, ulcerative colitis, again, an autoimmune disease. And for all autoimmune diseases, we need to remove the foreign protein. Ulcerative colitis affects the colon. And it's also a chronic disease and it affects the innermost lining of the colon and the rectum. And so the symptoms are rectal bleeding, bloody diarrhea, abdominal cramps and pain. It can even um, predispose to colon cancer. And the standard treatment consists of medications to reduce inflammation and immunosuppressive medications, and even surgery. Now, to tell you the truth, some people have this so severe that we can't just change the diet and expect them to get well. So it does take some time to reduce the anti-inflammatories and the immunosuppressive medications, because if you suddenly stop them, it just flares up, and we can't deal with that when we're dealing with autoimmune diseases. So this has to be treated very carefully. Celiac disease is another autoimmune disease where there's allergy or uh, intolerance of wheat or gluten. And no wonder, because we were anyway never supposed to eat wheat, right? So over a time, this creates inflammation. It damages the small intestine lining, leading to medical complications because the small intestine is where food or nutrients, rather nutrients from the food, is absorbed. And so now we don't have the right nutrients due to malabsorption. And the classic symptom is diarrhea, but it can also have bloating and gas and fatigue and anemia and can even lead to osteoporosis. And many people don't even have symptoms. Interestingly, if you find that wheat is doesn't feel so good, it's really important to let it go. And now there are so many alternatives. Like we can make similar things with 
millets instead, right? And that's why we have millet classes as well. So a strict gluten-free diet can actually help manage the symptoms. And when the symptoms go away, the intestine can heal and you can become better. So the treatment of autoimmune digestive issues rest in removing the cause, listening to the body carefully, and if at all required, anti-inflammatory or immunosuppressive drugs may be used in the beginning of the treatment. As I said, colon cancer, there are so many causes of cancers that we have to remove that it really means that you should view the, um, the talk on cancers, but meat is a big cause of colon cancer and so is dairy because it contains no fiber. So what is fiber? Fiber is the thing that cleans out our digestive tract and actually is the bulk of the stool and helps the stool come out. And if we don't have proper stool, if we don't clean out regularly our colon, then there can be decomposition and decaying and toxin absorption and colon cancer. So now we are going to talk about how to build a good gut microbiome. And do you know that the microbiome or all the bacteria inside our body may be equal to or even more than the number of cells in our body. That means we're never alone. We have this huge population of microbes with us. So much so that we can't live without them. We live in a symbiotic relationship with them, which is why antibiotics are so harmful. Now, uh, you know, in fact, there have been studies done where human beings have been kept in absolutely sterile conditions where there's no microbes in the air and no microbes anywhere and they don't survive because you know these microbes force us to produce antibodies against bad microbes and so that we are always building our immunity with their help all the time the gut microbiome helps to build immunity as well so they are very symbiotic. We need these bacteria. We should think twice before destroying them. And you may have heard that the gut microbiome is our second brain as well. That means when you have a healthy microbiome, your anxiety and depression also goes away. And that's exactly what Shalini spoke about. And they feed on fiber. That means if we eat the fast processed foods that are available everywhere today and we don't have enough fiber, how can we have a good healthy a gut microbiome, right? So if somebody just doesn't have a good microbiome, you know what they do these days? They do fecal implants. That means they take the feces, the stools of a person with um, a good gut microbiome and implant it into the person with the with all these problems so that the microbes in the stool multiply in the new environment and the patient can build a good gut microbiome. So imagine what damage we do when we repeatedly use antibiotics. So now, to heal gut health, a few do's. Increase the fiber in your food unless you have a problem where you can't eat fiber. Like irritable bowel syndrome, it can be that you can't eat foods full of fiber. And then too, you know, banana is the best because banana has soluble fiber and it can be eaten. And so you're still getting fiber because it's a plant and it's a whole food. Have plenty of raw foods if you can. And if you can't digest raw food, build up your raw vocabulary slowly by starting with 
steam foods and then steaming them less and less and going closer and closer to raw. Have a nutrient dense, high quality food, foods like, um, you know, always think about how to buy the best quality food to put in your body. Sometimes we look for quality outside of our body. We look for, you know, name brand clothes and shoes and purses and cars and whatnot. And we forgot, we, we actually uh, think twice about spending on high quality foods. We just buy anything. Do the other way around because your body cannot be replaced. And then avoid harmful substances. Tea and coffee are just the beginning, but sugar and oil and, of course, substance abuse like alcohol and um, any drugs. And avoid meat and dairy. Avoid sugar, I already said, alcohol, refined substances, drugs, tobacco, unnecessary medications, and any kind of chemicals. You know, we are putting chemicals in our body through our skin when we apply chemicals, like that lotion or soaps and shampoos. And we're breathing in chemicals when you breathe in um perfumes or air fresheners or window cleaners or toilet cleaners or phenyls or all of these things. Avoid these. And tobacco, I already said, tea and coffee and eating at the wrong time. You know, the best time to eat is during when the sun is out, right? Don't eat before sunrise and don't eat after sunset. This would be the best way and if we can't, make sure that dinner latest by 8 and bed latest by 10, our body heals between 10 and 4, but you have to be asleep. What can we expect when we heal the gut? So many changes. So better moods, because the gut is the second brain. Hormone, Im hormone balance. Because now we're not taking in hormones from outside. We're not taking in the hormones that come from animal products because all hormones produce, all uh, animals produce hormones just like us. And then reduced inflammation and pain, a stronger immune system because the gut is important as a for the immune system. And obviously, if you can... Absorb the nutrients, better energy, better cognitive function, your brain works better, clearer skin, of course. Lower disease risk because of better um, immune system, reduce seasonal allergies, reduce seasonal allergies, less food sensitivities, less anxiety and depression. And you saw all of this in the three testimonials that we had today. So in summary, the cause of most digestive disturbances is our modern diet. And we should always eat what nature or God designed for us. Our body is always working to heal. So just because we have diarrhea, we shouldn't take something to stop it. We should remove the cause of the problem. Prevent such disturbances by always putting high quality foods in the body and high quality thoughts in the mind. And if you're depressed or anxious, one way to overcome that is just to write down every night five things that went well during your day. You might have to think in the beginning, but with practice it becomes easy. And before you wake up or get out of bed in the morning, write down five things that you are grateful for. This starts your night off in a positive mood and starts your day off in a positive mood as well. And heal by listening carefully to the body and avoid harmful substances. So Sharon always recommends 
a plant-based diet. And of course, remember that we can get rid of the grains as well. Whole foods, organic, and vitamin B12 and vitamin D should be checked and supplemented if required. Now, how can we support you? I just want to say that we have almost 600 healthy recipes on our website that you can view at any time and share with your friends. We also have publications that I'll just show you that are available, or let me show you right now, that are available for free download on our website. And then we have cooking classes, that teach you how to cook oil-free and dairy-free. We even have a basic cooking class that teaches you oil-free, dairy-free cooking. And we have consultations. And you saw Shalini, she's a consultant with Sharon. We have a team of doctors and nutritionists that can help you. And the best part about our doctors and nutritionists and even our facilitators is that they themselves are following this lifestyle and have benefited from it. And so they know exactly how to support you. So that's it from me. I want to thank you for being here. Mm -hmm.